Hello, everybody. My name is Adrian Huck. My pronoun and I am a high school senior in New Haven, Connecticut. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my workshop, Gender Dysphoria Feelings and Fighting Back. And in this workshop, I'm going to be covering what gender dysphoria is, how we can cope with it, and how to be a trans ally and an ally to your friend with dysphoria. So let's get into it. Firstly, what is gender dysphoria? Gender dysphoria is the distress that someone experiences as a result of their assigned gender and or sex not matching the gender that they're experiencing. And this is a recognized medical condition, but I wanna add that researchers show that this distress would not be as strong if we lived in a society that didn't have such strict gender divisions and such a strong upheld gender binary. So what I mean by the gender binary are the very strict put in place expectations and roles that we have set in place for men and women that keep us divided into two categories. And gender dysphoria can differ between binary and non-binary trans people. So what I mean by this, binary trans people are trans men and trans women, and non-binary trans people can include a multitude of identities under that umbrella, including gender queer, agender, Demi boy and demi girl. And also another point, not all trans people will experience the distress that comes with gender dysphoria. Others may just experience gender euphoria or the happiness and euphoric feelings that come with their experience gender. So that is gender dysphoria. So now let's go into the types of dysphoria. So oftentimes we hear about dysphoria being discomfort with your physical body, but there are other types of dysphoria as well. So firstly, there's body dysphoria. So this is the discomfort that someone feels with their physical body and how it functions. So for example, if you were a trans man or trans masculine, you may feel dysphoric about the chest region or hip region um, or other ways that your body functions that you don't feel matches with your gender that you experience. Next is social dysphoria. This is pretty much how you are perceived by others and seen socially. So um, you may experience dysphoria about pronouns or the name people use for you, bathrooms you are expected to use, or just other ways that society is perceiving you. Next is mind dysphoria, and this is the discomfort people feel when their thoughts and emotions are at odds with their sense of identity. So this one can be really tricky because we have ingrained in us such strong just expectations we believe for men and women. So this is definitely a result of the binary, but feeling that, for example, if you were a trans woman, that your thoughts and emotions are really not that of what you would see in other men. So next we have some example triggers. So a trigger could be hearing your birth name out loud if you are using a preferred name. Another could be getting misgendered by others, which is having the wrong pronouns used for you. Another can be certain clothing. Um, clothing can sometimes highlight features that you are uncomfortable with or don't necessarily want to highlight and uh, also gendered spaces or activities could be a trigger for dysphoria. Um, an example of these spaces can of course be bathrooms or activities such as classroom things like splitting up into boys and girls, partners. Those spaces can be uncomfortable for both non-binary people and binary people because there's an expectation to fit into either of those two. And I'm curious to hear what are some other triggers that people have for their gender dysphoria because there are plenty, there's dozens and dozens of them, and I want to hear anything that I've missed. So next, how does dysphoria affect individuals? So dysphoria can change the way a person wants to express their gender. So gender expression is how you're outwardly expressing your gender and communicating that to others. So that can include 
your style and how you act towards others and your behavior. Um, some people may want to socially transition. So this can include changing your name, using different pronouns, using a different bathroom. Um, and others may want to medically transition. So medical transitions, there's a lot that goes under it, but that includes gender affirming surgeries, hormone therapy, and more. And this is most often what we see when we see trans people in the media or hear about them. We often hear about the ones that have medically transitioned. Um, but also some trans people may not be interested in either of these and just want to be affirmed in their gender and nothing else. And all of these ways of transitioning or not transitioning are all valid. So some challenges of gender dysphoria can be from a negative self-image. So especially if you have body dysphoria, it can be difficult to find self-confidence or feel good in your body, and that can lead to just a lower self-esteem. Next, dysphoria can interfere with your daily activities. So an example of this could be just being constantly reminded of things that trigger your dysphoria, such as having to fill out forms which require your birth name or having to use um, gendered bathrooms. So there's a lot of things that can come up in daily life that can be triggering and make it difficult to actually participate in a lot of activities or can interfere with your willingness to do certain things like talk to people if you are just work about your voice or volunteer to do something because you're afraid that the people there won't um, use your preferred pronouns or your name. So there's a lot of things that can affect your interference, that can interfere with your daily life. Next, dysphoria can cause problems in relationships or intimacy. So an example of this could be if your partner does not experience dysphoria and does not really understand um, your experiences or your boundaries or just what's triggering for you and that can cause difficulties in relationships. Um, next, people with gender dysphoria may experience pressure to fit into societal gender roles in the binary even more. So an example of that could be acting or dressing more like their assigned gender. They may feel pressure to do that and especially non-binary people, they may not know where to fall in this and feeling like they're kind of they're doubting their own expressions um, because of these very upheld binaries in our society. Um, next, people with gender dysphoria have a higher risk of emotional and behavioral problems and that is often due to the distress, victimization, and other factors that tie into being a trans person. And I also want to add that there's different challenges for everybody who has dysphoria due to a lot of different factors such as where you live, your family, the intensity of your dysphoria, your age. So there's so many things that make dysphoria unique to the individual. And I'm curious to hear about how dysphoria impacts your life and what challenges you face due to it. Um, so please leave those in the comments or in the live chat. I would love to hear about it. So next we're gonna do an activity of how would you feel? And um, this is especially for the cisgender people watching this. I just wanted to do an activity that would kind of shed light on a lot of the different things that can be not okay with trans people and people who experience dysphoria, but may not cross your mind as a cisgender person. So I'm going to ask you to these statements and I want you to think in your head if you would feel okay or not feel okay with this. One. How would you feel if someone called you by the pronouns used for your assigned gender? How would you feel if someone referred to you by your birth name? How would you feel if someone told you to split into boys and girls groups? How would you feel if you had to use the bathroom of your assigned gender? 
how would you feel if you had to wear clothes typical of your assigned gender? How would you feel if someone asked you to justify your gender identity? How would you feel if someone addressed a crowd as ladies and gentlemen? So thank you for participating in that activity. Um, so I decided to do this because for a lot of these statements, there's many people who experience dysphoria that would not be okay with a lot of these. And so if you answered that you would be okay with a lot of these, I want you to think about how a lot of these situations can really negatively affect people um, who are facing gender dysphoria. So we just covered a lot of heavy content that especially could be triggering for folks with dysphoria. So I wanna take a breathing break. Everyone just take a deep breath. And just allow yourself to be centered and relaxed. And now we are going to phase into the more positive portion of this presentation. And that's going to start with finding your gender euphoria. So as I mentioned previously, gender euphoria is the feeling of happiness and feeling content and comfort in your body and your gender expression and overall just feeling great about yourself and your identity. So to find this, there's a lot of methods that are of course unique to the person, but here are some ways that people can find gender euphoria. So makeup and contouring can help some people um, to have fun and to stimulate your experienced gender. Same thing with binding, packing, tucking, or wearing items that simulate your experienced gender or really heighten those feelings of euphoria and joy. Next, self-expression through fashion or drag. It's always fun to try new looks. Um, next is affirming media. So when we think of media, don't just think of TV, but also like books, magazines, podcasts, finding some of those that highlight trans people or trans characters in a positive light can be euphoric. So for example, something I'm doing is finding a lot of teen LGBTQ books. Um, and I actually just found one with a non-binary main character that I'm excited to read. And another thing that can give some folks gender euphoria is passing as they experience gender, or some people may not be interested in passing and they would just want to be affirmed anyway. Um, and next is having your correct pronouns and name used. That can always be a spark of joy or just being around accepting people in general who accept you for who you are and your identity. And I wanna hear in the comments and on the live, what gives you gender euphoria? So next I have some tips um, about coping with gender dysphoria. So first is to talk to somebody. And this doesn't include like just a therapist, but can also be a family member, a friend, or even a hotline. And I also want to point out that there doesn't have to be a distinct solution that comes out of talking to folks, but it can just be a space to air your grievances. So for example, if you had a really bad day of being misgendered or just seeing all these gendered bathrooms and we're not able to find something gender neutral or we're not able to use the bathroom because there's too many people and you are not comfortable or any situation like that. It's awesome to talk about it with somebody who you trust. And even if there's not a way that you can solve it right then, it's still good to be able to get that off your chest. Next is to express yourself. So this one, there's endless possibilities depending on what you're interested in but it can inc include creative activities such as visual art or performance art or even sports. So really whatever your interest is in, delve into that and enjoy that. Next is to exper experiment with your aesthetic. So it's always super fun to try on new clothes or swap clothes with a friend or try on some makeup. 
um, if you are comfortable with that. And it can be a fun way to play around with your gender expression or even just for the day to take your mind off things. Next is to find validating media. This is a little bit similar to the gender euphoria, finding affirming media. Um, but yeah, there are just so many books out there, so many videos, so many newspaper articles that can really help you feel affirmed in yourself and know that you are not alone. There are so many people that are out there and they are thriving and so can you. So it is really great to be able to find those and enjoy those and take time to realize that there are so many people in the community um, that are just like you. Next is to build community. So this is really important for the queer community as a whole. Um, but even if you don't have a local support group or a local pride center, it is super important to build a community. And if you cannot have those physical spaces, I highly recommend an internet community such as on social media. I myself am involved in many different group chats with LGBTQ youth that are near me or not even near me. So as long as you're being safe, I highly recommend um, joining one of these groups. And it's a great place to connect to others, share your experiences, and know that they will support you and understand where you're coming from. Next is to find an escape. If you're able to explore a new part of the city, take yourself out to a new store or a new park, just anything to show that life is more than the situation you're in right now. If that is unaccepting in work or school or home, there is more to life than just those environments. And it's good to get a new perspective. Next, here are some tips from me. If you're using a preferred name, look away when you have to write or type your birth name or thing or sign up for things, introduce yourself with that preferred name when it's possible, and make social media your friends and really cultivate a safe space through there. So a way you can do that is to follow a lot of LGBTQ icons and public figures, and this can really help you make social media a positive place. A lot of people complain that it is negative or a toxic environment for them, but I don't think so because I make an effort to follow people from all um, sexualities and gender identities throughout the LGBTQ community, and this really gives me a positive outlook. And there's also some great just positivity posts about being queer. There's tips, there's of course community as I mentioned, and there's memes. So just make it a fun and accepting and positive place for you. And next, if you've had like a really dysphoric day, you're feeling really down or overwhelmed, it's always a great idea to prioritize your mental health and practice self-care. If you need to take an afternoon off to do something you like or just nap, or if you need more than that, that's fine too. But it's always important to honor yourself and your feelings and your body. And if anyone else has tips they would like to share about coping with gender dysphoria, I would love to hear it in the comments or on the live. And next here is a collage of different trans heroes that I have. And I love to just remind myself of amazing icons that I look up to and of course the people that came before me and allowed the community to be where it is today. So someone I would like to point out from this list on the top row in the middle, this is Marsha P. Johnson and I look up to her as one of the revolutionaries that paved the way for trans rights and trans liberation and of course for the whole community as well. Um, and next to Marsha is Alok Vaid Manon, and they are um, a really great poet and activist and fashion icon that I look up to that shares awesome content that makes me feel affirmed in my identity. So I would love to hear who your trans heroes are 
in the comments or on the live as well. And next, um, because a lot of times people with dysphoria or a lot of people may just face low self-esteem, um, and I just want to do this activity about self-image positivity. So if everyone could take a moment to think about something you like about yourself. So I'll give you a few seconds to do that. All right, now think about something you don't like about yourself. Now I want you to imagine you taking that negative thought, putting it into this box and locking it up and shoving it into the back of a closet where you're never gonna see it again. And with that positive thought, I want you to embrace it and really let it absorb into you and really feel that and you know it's true. So I hope you will cherish that compliment from you to you and understand that there are so many things that make you a great person and even through dysphoria if it's hard to see something good about yourself I hope you will remember this one compliment and remember that you are more than your dysphoria and your experiences and you are a great person. Next, I have some tips for supporting a friend with dysphoria. So firstly, you should be actively ready to listen to your trans friend talk about their personal struggles. Even if you can't directly relate to those things they're talking about, it's still really important to just be there and to be a listening ear. Next, you should always ask what pronouns your friend's using and when it's okay to use those pronouns. So for example, um, if your friend is not out to a lot of their teachers, but they are to some of them, make sure that you know who it's okay to use those pronouns around and with what friend groups or in what settings or environments. Next, compliment your friend in a gender affirming way. So for example, if you have a friend who's a trans girl, call her pretty and gorgeous. If you have a friend who is a trans guy, maybe you'll call him handsome or dashing. Or if you don't know what compliment they would like use for them, just ask them how they would like to be complimented. Next, treat your friend like you would treat anybody of the gender they identify as. So for example, if you were throwing a girl's night, invite your friend who's a trans girl and let her know that you're including her and that she belongs. Next, if you are able to help your friend with bathrooms or finding gender neutral bathrooms. So if you and your friend are of the same sex, it can be really helpful for you to scope out the situation for bathrooms beforehand, see if there's an open stall or see if there's too many people inside. And this can really help your friend scope out the situation and make sure they don't have to go through a panic when they're going in or helping find gender neutral bathrooms can also be a help, not only to non-binary people, but also trans folks who might just want to be in their own stall. Next is to associate with others who are friendly and accepting to trans people. So who you associate with can show a bit about who you are as a person as well. So it's really important to associate with people who aren't transphobic and aren't queerphobic, and this can really show the message to your friend that you are an ally and you are supportive and make sure that your friend is comfortable around you and your friends. Next is to be trustworthy with the information that they share with you. Um, just as you wouldn't want someone sharing your secrets, um, you shouldn't um, share anything with others that your friend does not want to share about their identity. Next is to check in with your friend on their dysphoria and how they're feeling. This one is really important. Um, I have a friend at school who would check in with me about, for example, if she noticed I got misgendered by someone else or if my birthday was called in attendance or something like that, she would check in with how I'm feeling. 
And that's really important to let your friend know that you're cared for and you're looking out for them. And of course, just appreciate and care for them. That is all we need. Next, some don'ts for trans allies in general. Don't assume someone's gender or pronouns. It's always fine to ask first, and that way that will save um, the person embarrassment or just feeling uncomfortable. Next, a simple fix in language. Instead of saying transgenders or transgendered people, say trans people or the trans community. Next, don't ask invasive questions such as were you born a boy or girl or ask for someone's birth name. These can be really personal questions and make them uncomfortable. Next is not to say things such as but you look like a boy or girl or but you were such an attractive boy or girl before you transitioned. Um, these things can be really hurtful to someone's gender expression or to just the fact that they transitioned for them um, and they're more happier in this state than they were earlier. So it's not good to kind of glamorize and praise the person um, that they were before, especially in terms of appearance. Next is not to out someone that you know is transgender or tell other people because it's not up to you. And if your friend wants to tell other people, then they should do it on their terms. Next, you should not ask trans people about their genitals or how they have sex because it is none of your business and not relevant to um, your conversation most likely. And it's just not something that should be crossing your mind. Next, do not question them identifying as what they identify as, um, especially if they don't meet your expectations of what expression you think should go with what identity, um, because that is all up to them and we all have unique experiences. So you shouldn't question why they're identifying this way or why they are dressing this way. Next is to not talk over their experiences as a trans person. So an example of that could be if there's a discussion going on about um, are trans people comfortable in schools or not. Instead of speaking for them, uplift trans voices and allow, allow them to share their stories by themselves when possible. Next are some do's for trans allies. First, if you're confused about what pronoun someone uses, it's always great to ask them directly. Um, a lot of people don't think that it is respectful to do that or are uncomfortable with it, but the truth of the matter is that it is perfectly fine and in fact it should be more, more, more normalized, but I think it is actually a very nice thing and it shows that you are willing to respect those pronouns and respect how um, they want to be addressed. And if you can't ask that person directly, you can just use their name for now or ask someone close to them what their pronouns are. Next, if you mess up on pronouns, just simply correct yourself or apologize and move on. There's no need to make a big deal out of it or a scene. It'll just make the person feel awkward. And if you promise to do better, then work on it and actually do better. Next is to self-educate as much as you can. It shouldn't be up to the trans person you know to tell you about everything and all their um, struggles and everything about the community. So learn as much as you can about transitioning, about the trans community or history, um, about different terms and about the gender binary in general and how it negatively impacts society as a whole. Next, understand that not all trans people have the same experiences. There's a very diverse array of journeys and experiences that we have to share. And also understand that being trans is not a choice. Next is to recognize and respect someone's gender identity regardless of whether or not they choose to medically transition. It is always pushed as like the main narrative that trans people will medically transition, but that is not true and it does not speak for everybody. So respect them regardless of that. And if they choose to medically transition, there's a variety of reasons and all of them are valid. 
Next is to use gender inclusive language. This is important just um, as a whole moving uh, away from so much of the male oriented language that is in the English language. So for example, even just looking at like congressman and mailman and hey guys, there's so many ways that we need to fix our language to be more inclusive of non-binary identities, but also just to move away from the male norm of things. Next is to advocate for trans rights and spread awareness about issues affecting the community. This is really important. Um, and next to challenge and stand up against transphobia because we can't do it ourselves and we need you to join us in our fight so we can create a safe and accepting future for us all. So thank you so much for listening to my presentation and I hope to see you at the live Q&A and chat with you in the comments. And thank you so much for watching.